Hollywood likes to paint an apocalyptic view of artificial intelligence. Many people believe that teaching computers to think could be the end of life on Earth as we know it. But there is a breed of tech mavericks that thinks artificial intelligence will actually save our lives. I'm a fan of science fiction, and I think that it opens your mind up to possibilities that you can actually do in the future. And a lot of these innovators are working to revolutionize the healthcare system in the tech-happy country of Singapore. We look at it as an entire health universe that we are building, where we can then unleash the true power of AI. The challenge with healthcare right now is we don't even know where the boundaries are. The steady march of the machine has taken over research labs with startups joining the revolution. No one has worked on this before. A lot of the peers in my lab think this is not a very smart decision. But as Singapore doubles down on AI, they believe this new technology will have the answers for everything from cancer through to how we care for the oldest and most vulnerable amongst us. This could be the difference between life and death. Welcome to Singapore's healthcare revolution. It's the speed that amazes me above all. It happens in seconds now. In their quest to improve the country's healthcare system and save lives, Singapore's AI superstars have been quick to get to the heart of the matter. There's this opportunity to push AI into an area that's literally close to our hearts. Often using their own experiences to drive their tech innovations. It started uh, as an idea, an idea that came about uh, in a bit of a dramatic moment. I got an ultrasound of the heart, which is echocardiography. And I ended up getting two different readings from two different doctors, one saying I was perfectly fine, and the other saying, I'm in big trouble. Uh, so automatically I started thinking, hmm, there's some room for improvement in this echo business. This fist-sized organ beats around 115,000 times a day, pumping around 2,000 gallons of blood around our bodies, and can even continue beating when disconnected from the body. Despite its superhuman abilities, it's prone to disease. Heart attack is the second most common cause of death in Singapore and among the leading causes of death for women. Because heart disease can take on many forms, it is notoriously hard to track and diagnose. I will be looking at your heart. You won't feel a thing. But where traditional medicine falls down, AI hopes to stand in its place. Position in the upper left quadrant of the thorax right next to the sternum. You can hear that voice, and that's actually guiding to the right position to look at one part of the heart. And you can see it goes green. That's really cool, because that means we've got the right position. Sparked by their brush with heart disease, cardiologist Carolyn Lam and her entrepreneur husband, James Hare, decided to risk big and seek investors for a new type of startup. One with AI at its heart. The AI software it helps to interpret what we're looking at, whether or not it's normal or not, and to make the automated measurements. By interpreting ultrasound images, the artificial intelligence automates the echocardiogram. Traditionally, it tells the condition of the heart, but it is time-consuming and sometimes inaccurate. What we've just done used to take me, a trained cardiologist, it would take me 30 minutes to interpret. And then because human-to-human -human variation is, is so great, it's up to 20% variation and taking all that now down to two minutes, a single click and with no variability. So for the same study, it's gonna give the same report because it reads everything. But as with AI startups, inventing and perfecting the tech is just step one for Carolyn and James. I've taken it upon myself, and that's the risk, to make sure we get the best darn product anyone could produce at this time out there and get it regulatory approved to the highest bar. And that's what we aim to do. Professor Philip Wong is another AI innovator who is fascinated by the human heart. The heart is an amazing uh, organ. The heart is a bag of muscle. It's the only uh, bag of muscle that has got spontaneous electrical signal. 
Now, if your heart stops for only three seconds, that is enough to stop blood flowing to your head and cause you to faint. So your heart cannot stop a beat for more than three seconds. Can you tell me more about your chest pain and palpitations? Yeah, the chest pain some come around a few seconds and after that it become okay. Palpitations is a very common symptom affecting patients in the population. It occurs for a few minutes to perhaps 10 to 20 minutes. However, many symptoms of heart conditions come and go, and by the time patients reach the clinic, the symptoms have often completely disappeared. It is very frustrating for the patient and the physician, especially when the symptoms are short-lived. And by the time they arrive at the clinic, the ECG that was done shows a normal heart rhythm. Hence, we are not able to capture the heart rhythm during the palpitation, and that deters us from making a proper and definitive diagnosis. Aware of this challenge, Dr. Philip Wong turned to his love of future tech for inspiration. I love science fiction. I have a very large toy collection of Star Wars and Star Trek. In Star Trek Voyager, where the electrical medical hologram, or EMH, had an entire personification of a, a medical doctor with all his knowledge built into a hologram that was working around. And in this case, what we envisage in the future is that this is actually the AI that will be based in the cloud. So you'll be seeing your data being sent to the cloud and the AI decipher the information and then treat you from the cloud. Philip knew that the key to cracking the mystery of heart disease lay in the data produced by an electrocardiogram, or ECG, a record of the heart's electrical activity. So the ECG is a trace of the voltage uh, of your heartbeat as it moves from the top of your heart to the bottom of your heart. If you break down the ECG, there are basically three bumps. First bump is when the top part of your heart contracts. Second bump is when the bottom part of your heart contracts. And the third bump is when the whole heart relaxes. So actually under my shirt, I'm wearing uh, a spider ECG that is paired to this phone. And here you can see clearly the signal that is being transmitted to this phone. What Dr. Philip Wong has done is allow doctors to continuously monitor a patient's heart health. The Spider Wireless ECG. So here is an example of an actual usable Spider unit, a very compact unit. The Spider's AI will then train on thousands of patients' heart data. The AI will then look for small abnormalities from the huge amount of data it has already learnt while monitoring a patient, allowing it to detect very simple changes in the heart's condition and accurately predict when a heart attack is imminent, potentially saving the patient's life. When we had the first uh, prototype unit, the first person to try it was my daughter, who was seven years at that time. We actually put it on her, so I have this very uh, cute uh, uh, image of a young girl holding a phone with her ECG being displayed as my first uh, trial patient. I was extremely happy to uh, see that. And over the last 10 years, Professor Wong's device has been used to help over 16,000 patients in Singapore. And when the AI system is rolled out, it can save many more. It's a tough road, but it's very satisfying. As you go on and get to know the patient uh, better, they come with their own uh, children, uh, and it's good to hear them say that, oh, you have looked after my, my dad or my mother for a long time now, and uh, he or she is doing very well. I think it's immensely uh, satisfying. AI Singapore looks at how Singapore can harness both the scientific potential as well as the economic potential of AI. If you look at AI being a tool and not something that's going to take away your job, then in many ways it's going to augment your ability and augment your intelligence by giving you better data-driven insights for you to do your things better. In the context of Singapore, it's actually an opportunity to be able to make their lives better for their citizens. Artificial intelligence has the ability to work undetected in the background. It never tires, never sleeps, never loses concentration. 
which could prove essential when it comes to looking after the most vulnerable amongst us, particularly our elderly. I have seen over the last five years that Uncle Ao is one of the seniors who has um, slowly become frail and unfortunately he's also fallen a couple of times. When a young, mobile patient falls, he usually recovers. But with the elderly, it can be fatal, especially if it goes unnoticed. But monitoring all Singaporeans who are over 65 to ensure they are always safe is an impossible task. In 2014, Hui Pink changed the course of his career, deciding to do something about this problem while working at the Singapore Management University. Good, good. Take a seat, take a seat. Thank you, thank you. So Singapore, as of 2018, has become an aged society. And by 2025, it is going to become a super aged society. Hello, Madam Chan. Hello. This means that we have increasing risks that are faced by the elderly population. We really have to leverage on technology to help us complement the human resources in looking after these seniors. A problem that gained real urgency with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. During the COVID period, seniors were discouraged from leaving home unnecessarily. This meant that those who live alone would more likely become more isolated. And research has shown that elderly people who live alone are twice more likely to die prematurely compared to those who do not live alone. With its ability to understand a huge amount of information, Hui Pink turned to artificial intelligence to help look after Singapore's elderly. The AI-assisted sensor in at home is a concept where you introduce the extra pair of eyes through non-intrusive sensors into the homes of seniors. This comprises motion sensors in each zone of the flat. The more sensors you put in your surroundings, the more data you are able to collect. But these sensors aren't CCTV cameras watched 24 hours by a guard in a booth. To get around the epic privacy issues, expense and inefficiency, Hui Pink's artificial intelligence plays its part. The combination of uh, motion sensors would be trained to detect this event called prolonged inactivity in the home. As they move around their homes, the inhabitants trigger the tiny sensors. These record how often they move to the kitchen to make tea, for example. This data is plugged into an AI system. The artificial intelligence quickly learns what is normal for that particular person. It comes to understand exactly how much they move every day. Their normal patterns become what the computer thinks is safe. But if this changes in a dramatic way, it alerts volunteers. I feel the home sensor is really beneficial, especially during the circuit breaker period, because most of the time our seniors will be at home. So that's when the system comes in place. This is like an additional assistance for us to ensure their safety. And as this is artificial intelligence, it doesn't just stop there. Instead, the system is always teaching itself, responding to any new data it gets. It is important for us to be able to adapt the model uh, this is because the patterns of the seniors will change over time. So what could be a normal pattern for a senior today, it could develop into a new normal in six months or a year's time. While the system is currently in place to assist the more isolated members of Marine Terrace, Hui Pink hopes it will expand beyond. 
From this project, my dream is that all the homes of the future in Singapore would come pre-built with this basic infrastructure. All of us will age and grow old someday. Um, so, in some ways, when we embark on this today, we are future-proofing ourselves so that whatever we uncover today could be something that will become part of our life in 10 or 20 years' time. Alongside monitoring, early detection, intervention and treatment are needed rapidly in order to fight some of Singapore's most pressing health conditions, including the biggest killer of all. And artificial intelligence may just be leading the charge. Every day, patients are in need of urgent answers of how to best treat their, their various cancers. And so with AI, we'll have those answers very quickly. Cancer is the number one killer in Singapore. As many as 35 people die every day from the disease, with lung cancer being one of the most common forms of cancer worldwide. The reason why it is highest mortality is because more than 85% of lung cancer patients, when they are diagnosed, they are already at a very late stage. Most people don't go for a CT scan unless they suspect they are at high risk of lung cancer. But artificial intelligence has cancer in its sights, allowing scientists like Dr. Jia Junan to simplify its early detection. But at 26 years of age, the AI prodigy has had to take on a great deal of responsibility in order to save lives in the future. I came to Singapore when I was 16, so initially it was quite tough for me because I don't even speak any English. But uh, after 10, 11 years, it's basically my second home. And one of the creature comforts that helped her to feel at home in her adopted country was also the key to her greatest technological breakthrough, her pet. For a very long time, we have known that a dog knows this 100,000 times better than that of the human nose. In recent decades, we have learned that dogs are able to smell early indications of some disease like skin cancer. I immediately was drawn to the idea of detecting disease or even cancer just simply through the breast. Cancer, like all other diseases, represents something out of the ordinary for the human body, which leaves clues to its existence through telltale signs. In the case of lung cancer, it appears to be a minute change in the smell of the air we breathe out. If we can create a high-tech device that works just like the dog knows and pairing it with AI, we will be able to detect disease like cancer just by analyzing the exhaled breath. I think a lot of the peers in my lab back then, they think this is not a very smart decision. No one has worked on this before, so I have to start from scratch. The molecules we are trying to detect are present at extremely low concentrations, parts per billion, or some are even at parts per trillion. At a certain point, I was very frustrated because I was almost into the third year of my PhD and I still haven't got any reproducible data. I think I just trusted the fact that if dog can smell it, there's no reason that with modern human technologies that we can't do it. I think there, there must be something that's, that's unique, that's being produced by cancer cells. The breath that we breathe out is made up of 99% of the air that we breathe in. But in the 1% that changes on the way out, there is a wealth of information. This air has rattled around our insides and picked up hints as to health issues hidden deep within. Volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, are tiny molecules in the body, which have the ability to change, particularly when a person gets sick. A change Junan is hoping to exploit, using AI to identify disease through our breath. We have developed this sampling device just to help us to collect a high quality sample so that we can get accurate analysis from that sample. User needs to breathe normally for like five seconds and that will give us enough data we need to analyze the results. Their technology is broken into two parts. The front end, which is the breath sampling device, 
and the back end, which is the complex artificial intelligence that processes all the data. So our sampling device works just like a nose of the dog. It picks up and helps us detect those molecules. And then our AI engine runs like the brain of the dog. So it analyzes the pattern of the hundreds of molecules in the sample and then predicts the result based on those profiles. Immediately after he breathes, we can see a peak showing up here. So here is the data I will upload and click to test. So you can see it's zero means negative, one means positive. So it shows that he's negative based on our algorithm. Our test system in theory is able to detect diseases not only originating from the lung. It can actually detect any types of disease that's caused by the changed metabolic pathway. So the idea is that in the future, you walk into a kiosk, we take a breast sample, we analyze, and if you do that regularly, then we will be able to predict or detect any potential diseases in earliest stages possible. I'm very humbled by the fact that I got to work on a technology that has the potential to save millions of lives. With medical tests like this enabled by AI, taking care of the diagnostic part, our doctors can then focus more on the actual treatment of the patients. They can even come up with personalized treatment plans based on the AI. Which is where Professor Dean Ho and his Curate AI system comes in. I have a huge interest in superhero and sci-fi movies because I think that they give us a lot of inspiration, watching Tony Stark tinkering with devices and building things uh, to help people to come up with new technologies. It seems every movie, uh, there's something that always gets the audience's jaws to drop. Dean is unique because he is an amazing blend of scientist, uh, entrepreneur, and macho man. <laughs> I moved to Singapore from Los Angeles just over two years ago. Stakes for us were really important because we came here knowing that there's this amazing ecosystem and that we would be able to help as many patients as possible. Under multiple circumstances, we've been contacted by patients and their families to help with uh, cancer drug dosing. Treating cancer using exceptionally powerful drugs called chemotherapy works by killing fast-growing cells inside the body, such as tumors. But in doing so, it can cause the immune system to weaken, reducing the body's ability to heal. Traditionally, for, for treatment with chemotherapy, in, in particular for oncologists, it's always been about uh, trying to give patients the highest tolerable dose. And from a patient point of view, I would want to always have the best dose that's delivered to me. And this best dose is not necessarily the same dose that the next patient will get. But Dean wanted to buck this trend and find the lowest effective dose, an almost impossible task since it varies for each individual. We are all different from each other. No two patients are alike. We have to move beyond a one-size-fits-all approach to care. This could be the difference between life and death. All right, Jason, so what we're gonna do with you today is we're gonna set you up on this treadmill. The team here is going to mask you up. We're gonna run you through the paces. Over several years, Dean has been training an AI system to simulate a human body and how it responds to various things. To create this system, he uses data from many different sources, everything from patients' responses to medication to the performance of athletes under different conditions. Jason, that was amazing work. Thank you. The medical devices that we use to support the treatment and acquire data from these patients are always evolving. And so we have to realize that our technology itself is always going to be dynamic. In its raw state, Dean's system is just software that is not calibrated to any one person. But by feeding the system data about a patient's responses, it mimics that individual. In effect, it becomes an AI clone. 
so Dean can experiment with different dosages without harming the patient. He can find the dosage that will kill the cancer, but do the least damage. The system continues to learn and evolve, becoming an ever more accurate AI clone. In real life, Dean's artificially intelligent clone doesn't exactly look like you or me. Now, when everybody looks at this, they see these interesting multicolored maps. I see a human which each of these plots. What you're looking at here are different inputs, how well the person's doing, the intensities that we're trying with the different modules. If we can achieve the goal of improving the patient's quality of life, and hopefully they can live longer than what would have been expected because the doses have been individualized and therefore they can stay on the treatment longer, I think this is what we are hoping to achieve at this point of time. Patients are in need of urgent answers of how to best treat their, their various cancers. And so with AI, we'll have those answers very quickly. And at the end of the day, we've seen these clear benefits. We've had patients experience, for example, low dosing in chemotherapy and substantially enhanced outcomes, longer survival times, lower toxicity, et cetera, better quality of life. If one were to walk in on a number of our team meetings, you'll often find a lot of cheering, a lot of fist bumping, a lot of pats on the back. For us, it's exhilarating, it's very gratifying, and our first question, is the patient happy? As healthcare pioneers like Dean implement their bold artificial intelligence solutions, the true potential of the technology will become apparent, improving everything from our sight to the way we are brought into the world. Incredible advances in artificial intelligence is starting to reshape the healthcare industry. But it takes visionary tech pioneers to see the future and see the next medical marvel, even when no one else does. The human eye is one of our most complex and powerful organs, the only place that provides an unobstructed view of our blood vessels. The eyes are a window to your health and maybe even more. With the right experience, the eye can warn experts about the presence of diseases as diverse as diabetes, multiple sclerosis, even cancer. But spotting the symptoms is not an easy task, unless you employ the power of AI. Okay, Mr. Ramdan, just place your chin. I'm going to take a picture on my right eye. Can I see the small red color like? This is fundus photography. Essentially, we are taking a picture of the back of the eye using a digital camera. The retinal image tells you the health of the blood vessels, the health of the nerve layers, the health of the nerves, as well as the overall health of the eye itself. Captivated by the potential of the eye, Professor Wong of the Singapore National Eye Centre made an early career pledge to protect this precious organ, a journey that eventually led him to be one of Singapore's AI pioneers. I remember in the 1990s when I was a young doctor training to be an eye specialist. I saw many patients with diabetes who need to be seen for a condition called diabetic retinopathy, which is a complication of people with diabetes. If you do not be treated, you are almost likely to lose vision. Caused by high blood sugar levels, this condition means that damaged blood vessels at the back of the eye can leak across the retina. Early symptoms start as blurry vision and can develop into total and irreversible blindness. Once you've damaged the optic nerve or the retina in the eye, it tends to be irreversible. The proportion of people who have diabetes is rising and diabetic eye disease happens to be actually the most common microvascular complication or consequence of diabetes. That's why it's growing in incidence and importance. When I looked at the problem, we found that maybe about 400 million people around the world have diabetes, of which a third, in other words, 100 plus million, would have this condition of diabetic retinopathy. So one question we really wanted to solve was, how do we manage such a large number of people with diabetic retinopathy 
who needs to be seen by eye specialists on a yearly basis. A time-consuming process that is incredibly difficult to do with 100% accuracy. And every case missed heightens the chance of blindness. You're basically talking about someone's vision, the risk of blindness, and that to us was an important bar for us to reach better performance. A lot of people are interested and no one has anything outside there. So 20 years ago, Professor Wong hedged his bets on artificial intelligence to tackle this problem. It was a gamble that only a few like-minded people understood at the time. We have to change many people's mindset. Uh, a lot of people would like to do things in the old way. But pioneers from NUS, Ten Tok Seng Hospital, and the Singapore National Eye Center combined to develop the streamlined and comprehensive AI-based system. The result is Selena Plus, a system that uses AI's incredible ability to recognize patterns in complicated data. And it happens in a series of algorithms called a neural network, which mimics our own brain's functions. The information is moved from the input through the middle layers before reaching the output, diagnosing if the image shows eye disease. The learning is happening in what is called the hidden layers, essentially a black box where we can't track what is occurring, but must trust its outcomes. The AI is making its decision, but in reality, it's constantly putting the data through layer after layer of filters to arrive at its answer a process so complex that it would take the world's best mathematicians years to attempt. And once trained, Selena Plus can recognize which are the healthy images or the dangerous ones with over 90% accuracy in the blink of an eye. So now we have Selena's results of this patient's images. And we can see that Selena has actually detected referable diabetic retinopathy on this set of images. It also has stated that detected no glaucoma and referable AMD for this patient's right eyes. The AI in Selena Plus was able to produce this report within seconds. So when you upload the image to Selena Plus, what it gives you is the instantaneous diagnosis within you know, 0.4 seconds. For Selena Plus, the primary aim is to help patients with diabetes to have regular eye screening in the automated manner. So we know by 2040, there's more than 650 million people worldwide is going to have diabetes. So I feel the AI could really potentially revolutionize how we should screen the patient's eye with diabetes. But with most of the complex calculations occurring within the hidden layers of AI technology, how can the average patient learn to trust what they can't see or understand? In an attempt to explain its thinking to us humans, Selena Plus produces a visualization of what it is seeing in the form of a heat map of the eye, in which it tries to highlight the abnormalities that it is noticing that we cannot. The heat map highlights an area of interest where it corresponds with the diabetic retinopathy lesions. It's a way for the artificial intelligence to explain its results to healthcare professionals. Because artificial intelligence is a black box, the visualization heat maps give us additional information and confirmation that Selena is not missing any eye diseases. In other words, you typically get the output that you are looking for, but that is not something that we typically recognize as an explanation. Right? So where the doctors get the diagnosis wrong and where the doctors have relied upon your AI systems, where there is a lack of explainability, the entire integrity of the healthcare domain may potentially be at stake, which is why we have to try to build in a causal model into AI systems that we're looking to implement in the healthcare domain. After working on this almost 30 years, one of the things that has been gratifying is to say, here is a big problem that we're trying to solve. And I was a young doctor then, didn't believe that it was possible because we were tackling a major significant disease. We are certainly not done and there will be more things that we'll discover along the way. And that will be quite exciting. But if we get it right, 
Professor Wong can see a bold future in which AI is able to extract ever more information about our health just by studying the blood vessels in our eye. A comprehensive health check from a simple picture. We think in the future, an artificial intelligence system that looks into the retina, detects the subtle changes in the blood vessels in the retina, saying that this is a signal or marker of future risk of stroke, heart disease, kidney disease. I think it is extremely exciting and is a promise for predictive medicine. And really, I think we all will be very excited if this were to happen soon. This AI revolution may feel remote and extremely complex, but it is not purely the preserve of technology experts. Some former patients have actually converted to the cause, using their own experiences to launch them on a new career. One such patient recently made the leap from hospital bed to AI innovator, determined to change an everyday procedure that went very wrong for her, as it does for many others around the world. So I was really happy when I was expecting my first child. The first two trimester was rather smooth sailing, but eventually the baby was overdue, so we needed to have a cesarean. And the best choice would be epidural, that is the most effective pain relief. But when the anesthetist put the epidural in, at that point I know that it was definitely not right. I shouldn't be feeling this way. So at that point I was in tears, I was in a very distressed state. I was in total panic mode. Caesarean births account for an estimated 45% of all births in Singapore. But the administration of spinal anesthesia by an epidural can be inaccurate and dangerous. I really hope that no other mothers would have to go through the same experience as me. So this was one of my main driver to why I wanted to spend so much time and energy to improve the outcome of mothers, improve the clinical outcomes, and also increase patient safety and satisfaction. The desire to improve the procedure led Tsai Lin to transition from her PhD in electrical engineering to concentrate instead on an AI-based system called USIGN, developed by KKH and NUS, which is shown in research to increase the accuracy of the procedure. I was lying on the hospital bed and I was thinking I would actually contribute to the society in my own way. I am very passionate about research translation. So I believe that good technology should not stay in the lab. I believe that we need the right people to actually bring this technology out from the lab and to the real world where it can actually benefit the community. So USIGN basically is a combination of uh, ultrasound imaging of the lower lumbar spine and also using artificial intelligence to basically improve the precision and accuracy of locating the correct spinal location. The AI can easily identify what is the vertebrae and where the target area is, right in the narrow space between them. In real time, the system then guides the doctor to the correct location to inject the epidural. After doing the ultrasound imaging, they said we will actually mark the correct location so that subsequently the injection can be done at these points. The first needle puncture success rate for the palpation and landmark technique is around 60%. And um, from our first clinical study using USIGN, we have achieved a 92% first needle puncture success rate. And with the testing phase of the system now complete, USIGN will start to be deployed across Singapore from 2021. It is my hope that hospitals all over the world will have a USIGN system so that women in labour uh, who needs epidural or spinal anesthesia will not have to go through the same experience as me. The beauty of artificial intelligence is the speed at which it can perform tasks and calculations. Things that would take you or I many decades can be done in the blink of an eye. But once built, AI systems are also incredibly adaptable. And in terms of healthcare emergencies, this could be life-saving especially when the worst happens. With more than a million dead and millions more infected, COVID-19 has become the number one global health emergency, 
leaving experts around the world to scramble for cures, vaccines, and treatments. Now, AI has joined the fight in earnest, already proving its importance in understanding and combating the virus. Uh, there are some people who think that COVID-19 is a respiratory ailment because people start having lung difficulties. This system called Summit. So it's one of the best supercomputers in the world. So a lot of data from COVID-19 patients inputted to this particular system from which it was able to suggest otherwise that in fact it is uh, something that is vascular. It relates to the vessels and how these vessels get compromised. And this is very interesting because the AI system, as a result of the data it was given, was able to derive a hypothesis that is not necessarily one shared by the medical community. This revolutionary understanding of the virus's impact on the body meant that doctors could better diagnose and treat patients when stricken with COVID-19. And across the board, Singapore's AI rock stars have jumped in foot first rapidly adapting their AI systems to push Singapore to the front of this fight. The potential for our real-time non-invasive breast test is huge when it comes to a pandemic situation like COVID-19. So far, we don't really have a screening for COVID-19. We take temperatures wherever we go, but we know that it doesn't really work. A lot of patients, they do not develop fever even when they are infected. Imagine we have a breast test station in all the entry points, in all the airports, or the hotels, or the train stations. Simply by taking a breast, we will be able to identify and isolate potential carriers of the virus immediately. Over the last few months, we uh, did a clinical study in collaboration with National Center of Infectious Disease here in Singapore on COVID-19, and we had some uh, very promising initial results. We have also expanded our team from a size of three to uh, around 10 full-time staff now. I'm definitely more motivated to be part of this fight of the COVID-19. Fortunately, the future of a life-saving COVID-19 treatment may already be well on its way. And the way that treatments are generally discovered is in combinations of readily available drugs, where a tiny tweak in things such as mixing dosage might be the difference between success or failure. To even test one set of possible combinations is years and years of real-life trials but the number of possible combinations is practically infinite. And in a global health crisis, we don't have that long to find a cure. Professor Dean Ho believes his new AI platform called Identify can solve this issue despite the time crunch, doing the work of millions of drug trials at a phenomenal speed. Identify was created to optimize the design of combination therapies against the coronavirus. What we do is we strategically design different drug combinations, different drugs, different dosages, and we insert these drug combinations into the wells. And what we're doing is because each well of virus is exposed to a different iteration of drug combination, we are effectively crowdsourcing the virus to tell us what the best combinations are, all the way down to what the worst combinations are. We started getting approached by the clinical community and the pharma community. And when they started to look at how we were using AI, they were truly amazed. In effect, Dean is running a preliminary drug trial on millions of AI human clones. Different drug combinations are put through the AI, which measures the effects on the virus and the artificial intelligence sets to work, simulating these drugs in multiple combinations and dosages, but at incredible speed. In this one experiment, we'll have all the options laid out for us, so we have a great idea of how to best prevent infection with the virus. Now, what your artificial systems can do is if you run certain simulations, you can narrow the range of possible drug combinations. Right? Typically, that is a very large sample space. But if you run your simulations well, right, you can actually direct the attention of your medical researchers in a far more focused manner. 
when we think about COVID-19. We need answers quickly. This is the ultimate level of rapid actionability so that we will always be ready for future outbreaks and within weeks have answers on how to best start treatment for patients. The potential of artificial intelligence in healthcare is mind-bending. AI systems can find patterns and meaning in every aspect of our lives. Tackling vast amounts of data and spotting abnormalities in our health long before they become apparent, allowing us to take preventative action and save lives. We need the next generations to keep thinking and keep innovating and keep making breakthroughs technologies. The next step of innovation will be how can you make AI actually more accessible? How can we make AI more intimately part of us as an individual, professionally, personally, and medically? The future is going to be quite an exciting time. The impact is going to be even bigger going forward.